hi there and welcome to today's video thank you so much for all the comments um, that you've had on the previous two videos I have listened and I will definitely do another video on more hoarding tips um, from popular demand so thank you so much for that and keep the comments coming so I know that and what you guys want to listen to and talk about Today's video is something so interesting and something that I've been speaking a lot about with colleagues and even some clients is around the power of the brain and the mind to create new neural pathways and circuits. So there's this concept in neuroscience called neuroplasticity, which is pretty much the brain and mind's ability to adapt to changing stimuli in the environment. So what happens with the brain in an, its adaptive function is with changing stimuli and demands on it, it can actually change its shape in the neural circuitry, form new synaptic connections, and also reorganize itself towards that change. So what does that mean for us as psychotherapists and people out there that want to change their lives for the better? Is we have our redundant neural pathways that we form from infancy right to present, and that is formed through all the images, all the sounds that you hear, the people you hang out with, the music you listen to, and especially, most importantly, what's going on up here is your self-talk. Over time, that becomes entrenched in your neural pathways. So, for example, if you watch a lot of news and you're very fear-based and you perceive the world to be a dangerous place, you're going to perpetuate that with habits, with perpetual, consistent patterns of behavior. If you, for example, come from a neglectful back background in your family or consistent relationships, you could have a neural pathway that tells you over time that people are not reliable, that you will not get your needs met, and that you won't be able to find love in the conventional sense that you've always searched for. So we have that notion of confirmation bias, where we go out in the world and we try to seek to confirm our hypotheses around us. So when people let you down, of course, it confirms that neural pathway. So psychotherapists speak a lot about the trauma bonded relationship and familiarity, which I've spoken about briefly in a previous video, which is pretty much outlining that the subconscious mind goes to what is familiar. So if, like the example we used about neglect, you will possibly and most probably perpetuate neglectful relationships if that is what your brain and your mind is used to. It's what you're expecting. And actually healthy, open relationships where you are heard and validated and someone is there for you and is reliable may be very unfamiliar to somebody that has that neural circuitry that's pushed through. In psychotherapy, what an amazing thing that, that happens is that when you're in the presence of a therapist that is a good fit for you, so we spoke about that before, finding the right therapist and fit for you, that you learn to trust, that doesn't judge you, and helps you accept yourself, is you open up a new neural pathway, a new neural circuitry, where you perceive that there are some people and relationships in the world that are open, non-judgmental, accepting, all of those types of things. And what happens? is you become, with time, open to meeting other connections and people and putting yourself out there and being assertive, putting up boundaries, all of those things that perhaps in the previous neural circuitry you weren't exposed to doing. Perhaps you weren't allowed to speak up in your family or you were shunned or ridiculed or any of those things. So therapy becomes that what we call corrective experience and it's like a dress rehearsal for life. So you go out into the world and you start to challenge that. Now if you're not in therapy, here's the good news, is you today have the power to start to challenge that previous neural circuitry of what your self-talk is telling you about yourself. You can challenge the people that you surround yourself by because they do influence us. So if you've got a lot of people around you that, for example, are not on a self-love journey or self-development, you're going to start to notice it once you start leveling up to your level of consciousness. Then you can start challenging what type of news you're ingesting, how much social media, what's the type of music, what are you infiltrating into consciousness with work. All of those things you can start to challenge because remember, all the stimuli that we're ingesting in the brain you ingesting about thousands every single day, over time create habits and entrenched neural circuitry. 
But the good news from neuroscience is that we can start to shift that. How amazing that the brain and the mind has that power to start to shift that, to start to even think that it's possible that we can be so empowered that you don't have to always stay with the stubborn neural circuitry that has been entrenched over decades of time, but with time and a lot of repetition, that's the thing with neuroscience, is you've got to repeat these habits, thoughts, feelings and behaviors over time for it to become quite entrenched. And then what happens is when you, you meet people or situations, is you're going to get to a crossroads where you have the old neural circuitry that either has loosened its hold over you or has become less foreground and more background or you'll get at a crossroads where you've got the new neural circuitry and the old one and you can choose is this that old familiar pattern that I think my worldview is going to be like or is it this new one where some people situations and things are going to work out for me that I'm worth it that I'm worth love and belonging and I can be vulnerable and I, ca I can express myself is all of those things are helping us to empower ourselves to not only choose what we um, choose to separate ourselves from and also surround ourselves around in terms of how the brain and mind and consciousness is influenced by the things that we surround ourselves by. When you learn this about neuroscience and your mind and your brain, you're going to think twice about watching a movie you don't agree with or listening to a piece of news article that you don't like because over time it shapes the brain. Even people that you surround yourself by and how they make you feel. And most important, most, most important is that inner critic that we've got to loosen the hold over in our mind. Is we've got to investigate what does that inner critic want to say about me? Why, why do I believe it? Where did it come from? And over time we start to challenge it. We start to think, okay, is there an alternative? We call that reframing. How else can I think about this? And if you do that with enough repetition, this magical new neural circuitry of more empowerment and living more mindfully and also understanding that, yes, life is very hard. There will be hardships and there are some relationships that will let us down. But there's a whole world out there of a whole bunch of people doing amazing things and communities that are there for each other and people that want to hear your voice. Okay, so please think about that and all the best with this.